But right now, joining us, uh, the former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani is a top advisor to Donald Trump. Mayor, thanks very much for joining us. Nice to be with you, Wolf. Uh, two days before Director Comey, the FBI director, sent that letter to Congress on the Huma Abedin emails that were found on her estranged husband's computer, uh, Anthony Weiner, this is what you said on Fox News. I'll play the clip. And I think he's got a surprise or two that you're going to hear about in the next two days. I, I, mean, I mean, I'm talking about some pretty big surprise. Oh, yeah, I heard you say that this morning. What do you mean? You'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. Rudy Giuliani, we got, you're lucky because we got to go. I'm out of time. Otherwise, I keep pressing you. We're not going to go down, and we're certainly not going to stop fighting. We've got a couple things up our sleeve that should turn this around. All right, since then, uh, you've suggested you've had conversations with former current FBI agents. Uh, to be clear, did anyone leak any aspects of that Clinton email investigation to you? Uh, no, I have spoken to no current FBI agents. Uh, gosh, in the last eight months, nine months, ten months, certainly not about this. Conversations that I've had have been basically with friends of mine that I work with on mafia cases and Colombian drug dealers and white collar cases. An awful lot of former FBI agents are enormously upset about uh, Comey's decision. You know, back in what was it, July? They, they disagreed with it. They thought it was a prosecutable case. So I've had lots of conversations with them. And they've, they've told me a lot about the, I guess, the disagreement between the Justice Department on the one hand and the FBI on the other. But it all comes from former FBI agents, and it's all hearsay. And in that particular uh, situation, I was actually talking about the advertising campaign that you were referencing earlier that I knew was going to come as a big surprise. And there were about four different formulations of it at that point that uh, we had in mind. And I didn't know which one we were going to use, but I knew one was going to be a big surprise. I wasn't referring to uh, any possible uh, you know, information about uh, emails or, or that sort of thing. Because in this letter that has just come out from uh, two Democratic uh, ranking members of, of respective committees, Elijah Cummings and John Conyers, they say, and they refer to an interview you gave this morning. Let me read the first two sentences for the letter. This is a letter to the uh, Inspector General of the U.S. Department of Justice. This morning, Rudy Giuliani, one of Donald Trump's closest and most vocal campaign advisors, appeared on national tele television and confirmed that he had obtained leaked information about the FBI's review of Clinton-related emails several days before FBI Director James Comey sent his letter to Congress last Friday about this matter. In fact, Mr. Giuliani went even further and bragged about the information he had obtained, stating, quote, did I hear about it? You're darn right I heard about it. So they're saying that you confirmed this morning you got this leaked information before the FBI wrote to Congress about the, the new review he well, that, wanted to undertake. I mean, that's not correct. I, I've had no conversations with anyone inside the FBI. Ha, have I, I have heard uh, for the last four months a tremendous amount of uh, information about the consternation within the FBI, the fact that FBI agents were very unhappy with the way they were being treated by the Justice Department. That's all true. But none of it came from any current F I haven't talked to a current FBI agent, as I told you, in the last, gosh, at least eight or ten months. But did you know, Mr. Did you know, Mr. Mayor, that, the, uh, that Comey was about to make this announcement right to Congress about this review? Because I, in the I, interview this morning on Fox and Friends, you seemed to say, did I hear about it? You're darn right I heard about what, it. What were you referring to? Well, I'm referring to the consternation within uh, the FBI, which, you know, the New York Times has reported on and the Wall Street Journal has reported on. That's what I was referring to. I was referring to the fact that, and, I, and this has been going on for about four months now, this tremendous uh, anger among, and I got it all from former FBI agents, tremendous anger within the FBI about the way Number one, Jim Comey's conclusion, and number two, the way they believed they were being obstructed by what they regard as a pretty corrupt uh, Obama Justice Department, you know, cutting off a grand jury investigation, cutting off subpoenas. I actually didn't get into that detail. I didn't find that out until, uh, until, re until recently. 
So, so what I hear you saying, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you're now sure. saying you did not know that Comey was going to release this information about a review of the I, uh, Huma Abedin emails found on her estranged husband's computer before he made that official that, report to Congress. That's absolutely correct. But I did know that there was... You had no was information a, about that. had no information about that at all. That came as a complete su surprise to me, except to the extent that maybe it wasn't as much of a surprise to me because I had been hearing for quite some time that there was a lot of, I don't know how you would describe it, maybe revolution is too strong a word, but a lot of debate and anger within the uh, FBI about the way they were being treated by the Justice Department and a lot of FBI agents feeling that the Justice Department had been corrupted, particularly with uh, Loretta Lynch's meeting with President Clinton four days before the interview then the report coming out four days later, you couldn't possibly have written that report in four days. It had to have been written before. Uh, and that was over the Fourth of July weekend. I have been hearing that all summer and all fall. But as far as uh, what uh, Jim Comey actually did, I had, I had absolutely no knowledge of that. And so, and, and so and you're talking about big surprises before the announcement that were forthcoming. You now say that was the, the advertising blitz that's going to take place yeah, over that, these final few days. That's what you were referring to? Yes, actually, that had uh, several different uh, possibilities at that time. There were a couple of other things that were being considered as uh, what was going to be done in the last four days of, of the campaign. In fact, one of them is still on the table, so I won't even talk about that. But it has nothing to do with the emails. What I was talking about so, was a, a push at the end to try to get uh, try to get Donald Trump's message out above the loud noise that's going on and a lot of the clutter that's going on in, in the campaign. So if the inspector general of the Department of Justice uh, accepts the recommendation, the request from these two members of Congress to go ahead and investigate leaks that are coming forward, not just what, what you may or may not have said, but other leaks that are coming forward, will you cooperate with that inspector general investigation? <laughs> yeah, I don't know anything about leaks from uh, the FBI or the Justice Department. I haven't talked to anybody in the FBI or Justice Department. Are you upset I, about I will leaks not, coming from I, the FBI? You're, you're I a former not, U.S. attorney. I, I will not, like uh, the people around uh, Hillary Clinton, take the Fifth Amendment or ask for immunity, or uh, uh, I have uh, no worry about being incriminated like the people around Hillary Clinton. She seems to be surrounded by, uh, gosh almighty, uh, looks like about eight or ten people have either gotten immunity or taken the Fifth Amendment. And uh, I mean, it's actually disgraceful that uh, you would be surrounded by so many people doing that. In my case, it's real simple. I've talked to no FBI agent. I've talked to no Justice Department official. I have no idea about who's leaking information. What I do know from former FBI agents is that we have a very angry FBI because they feel that the Justice Department of Barack Obama has been corrupted by the way in which L L Loretta Lynch handled this case. She recused herself from this case, remember. And now she's reinserted herself into it. Recusal from a case, Wolf, means you take yourself out of it and you turn it over to your subordinate. So she keeps coming into it. She keeps coming out of it. Uh, the FBI tried to get, and this I get from public sources, the, the FBI tried to get a grand jury impaneled and they were stopped by the Justice Department. And I have my own view of these allegations going back six or seven months. I think it is clear that Hillary Clinton... All right committed a multitude of federal crimes that are fairly Very easy. quickly, I want to move on. Let I me finish move my sentence. Stuff, I know you don't want to hear this, but that are fairly easily prosecutable. Much easier than cases that I've prosecuted uh, over the years. What do you mean by public sources? Many newspapers. There was an article, right. there, there was an article, uh, several articles. I don't know if it's true, but there were several articles that said that the FBI went right. and tried to get a grand jury impaneled well, back in February on the Clinton Foundation and was blocked from doing it. But, but uh, let me know. ask you a question, Mayor. If, if you don't know it's true, why are you suggesting it? Why are you going on national television talking about these issues if you don't know it's true? Well, I, I am told this by former FBI agents, and these are people that I work with when I was in uh, government, and I find to be credible people. And I think their, their, their conversations all corroborating each other must be maybe, you know, at least a handful of them uh, corroborating each other about the consternation within the FBI 
uh, it seemed to me that that was probably true. Also, it's my own a analysis. Couple of, a, a couple of follow-ups on this. I want to move on to some other stuff, but very sure. quickly, uh, did you get the information from former FBI officials or from the public record from newspapers? Uh, because there is a difference, and, and you appreciate, as a former U.S. attorney, yes. the difference, even if former FBI agents are providing sensitive, confidential information, they have a responsibility for the rest of their lives not to do so, right? Uh, no, not not really. When, and when the information they were providing. When they leave office, don't they sign? Don't they sign documents saying they won't well, release uh, secret information, well, if you the, will? They didn't give me any secret information. They just told me there was a big revolt. But they're going giving on. you confidential information from inside an investigation. They're telling me that there was uh, a lot of a lot of consternation and a lot of anger about the uh, conclusion that Jim Comey reached, which I could understand because I had that same consternation. And, uh, and a disappointment in the uh, conclusion that they, uh, that they reached. They didn't give me any facts. I had, no, I had no facts, no information, no particular information other than that there was a big dispute going on. And then there were an awful lot of newspaper articles about, like I told you, going, going to the Eastern District of New York to get a grand jury and being told they couldn't have a grand jury. And then seeing a lot of these people involved in the investigation, like John Podesta's lawyer being involved in the investigation at a very, very high level. The lawyer who John Podesta wrote in one of his emails kept him out of jail. I, I, I did not I get that from the FBI, by the way. I got that from the newspapers. But I just want to clarify that, that the, the point about speaking to former FBI agents as opposed to current FBI agents. We did some checking. You were on the Lars Larson radio show the other day, uh, and you said uh, you are getting that kind of information from active FBI agents. So you used that term. Uh, I, I just want to make sure, make sure we're, we're getting that right. We listened to the audio, and you were talking about current FBI agents, at least in that radio interview with Lars Larson. Well, the information I've been getting is from former FBI agents. So you misspoke I have to got, Lars Larson. I, I, if I did, if I did say that, uh, that was wrong. I have not, I have not spoken to a on-duty FBI agent about anything. I guess for the last ten months. I don't know. I, I've, met, I've actually never talked about this investigation to any current member of the Justice Department or current FBI agent. I don't know if I can make it any clearer right. than that. You can look at my right. telephone right. records if you want. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, you know, acid bleach my emails. <laughs> All right. Well, I, we're not going to look at your telephone records. Uh, <laughs> and it's good to know that if the, if the Inspector General of the Justice Department he can ask calls me on any, you, you're not going to plead. He, you're, you're, he, not gonna plead you're not going to plead. I will not do what Hillary Clinton's people with do. With any will, of these investigations. I will give him the same answers <laughs> I just gave you. All right. No, uh, so I won't have on, a on the public Lars and Larson, a private on the Lars position. Larson, on the Lars Larson radio interview, you misspoke. Is that right? If I did say that, I did. Uh, my, uh, I have not spoken to any active FBI agent. All the information I have comes from newspapers, books, and some former FBI agents. All right. Let's talk about Governor Chris Christie. As you know, two of his uh, top staffers were convicted today on all charges in connection with what's called that Bridgegate Lane closure, that scandal. This is what Donald Trump had to say about Chris Christie on this issue last December. The George Washington Bridge. He knew about it. Hey, how do you have breakfast with people every day of your lives? They're closing up the largest bridge in the world the biggest in the United States, traffic flowing during rush hour. People couldn't get across for six, seven hours. Ambulances, fire trucks. They're with them all the time, the people that did it. They never said, hey, boss, uh, we're closing up the George Washington Bridge tonight. No, they never said. They're talking about the weather, right? <laughs> then, so they, he knew about it. He, he knew about it. He totally knew about it. Governor Christie's aides, uh, they both testified that Christie knew about that decision to shut down the bridge. The prosecution said Christie knew about that decision. Uh, you just heard Donald Trump say he believes Christie knew about the decision. Do you still have confidence in Chris Christie leading the transition team for the uh, Trump campaign? Well, I have confidence in Chris Christie. I've known Chris for a very long time, including back when he was uh, U.S. attorney, and I take, I take uh, his word for it. Uh, the people who testified obviously had a motive to say what they said. 
you have to take that into consideration, right? They were trying to save themselves from a, uh, from a conviction. And one of the ways to save yourself from a conviction is to say, I was ordered to do it or I was told to do it. And Chris has repeatedly said that he didn't know about it. So uh, I'm certainly not going to, uh, I'm not going to turn my back on a friend because uh, some people at a trial, you know, in, as part of their defense, use that as their defense. And, and as, as far as his role in the campaign right now, he's taken a very low profile. We haven't seen him on television yes. lately. Is he still in charge of the transition team? As far as, as far as I know, he is, but I'm not, I mean, I haven't been involved with the transition team at all, so you probably have to check with someone else. As far as I know, he is, yes. But, I, uh, but, uh, but, but don't, take, don't take that as, uh, you know, 100% correct, because I'm, I'm not knowledgeable right. about that. Mayor Giuliani, uh, as always, we appreciate your <laughs> joining you. us. Uh, thanks very much. Thank you.